Thank you for coming forward. Really appreciate. This is really an honor. A lot of people have really responded uh, to bring safe dentistry in Pakistan. And I know we all want that one way or another. Everyone is contributing towards that. But I think we can have a bigger impact if we can work together to achieve the same uh, same goals. I know that you know we have progressed a lot in Pakistan. Dentistry has grown quite a bit, especially in the last 20 years. And we have a contribution from really amazing people who have dedicated their life towards growth of dentistry in Pakistan. Uh, uh, so, but internationally, I think uh, the pace for the growth has been even more. And uh, the situation at hand is that, you know, a lot of people, a growing number of public and patients in Pakistan, they are becoming aware of that. And uh, they want the same thing here in Pakistan and they want it now. Uh, people have access to social media. They have uh, relatives living abroad and they have visited abroad. And that is really something, a challenging situation coming our ways because uh, uh, it probably doesn't affect uh, people who have established practices and they are very successful in it. But it really creates a bigger problem for the newcomers. It's creating difficulties. And I think we're going to have to do something about it, especially for a younger lot, because they are in a state of despair. Even before COVID, there were challenges and they have just gone worse after that. So uh, I would like Dr. Abed Arshad to get started. We will like to hear from him and uh, we'll just follow up with everyone else. Sir, please. Assalamu alaikum, uh, dear colleagues. Or uh, a special thanks for uh, Dr. Akib and his team for taking this initiative. And I think, uh, as he rightly pointed out, going forward together is the way to go. Now, cross-infection control uh, has been a dilemma for a long, long time uh, in Pakistan. And especially so, it has been highlighted with the advent of COVID-19. I would just like to... Uh, Redefine or uh, in terminology context me. Uh, the universal precautions was uh, the term introduced by OSHA, Occupational and Health Administration from US in 1983. So basically for blood form accident. And uh, CDC at a later stage uh, in this to standard precautions. And standard precautions include all possible cross infections, which would include bloodborne, uh, fomite surfaces infections, as well as airborne infections. And airborne infections, uh, you know, there were some uh, special, uh, you know, protocols which were introduced uh, earlier in this decade. And uh, it has been further highlighted with the advent of this COVID, which we have at this time, ongoing. Uh, precautions, I think uh, we will do not need to go into the details of that. We are all very well versed with them. Uh, and I mean, they are taught theoretically. And the question and the challenge for us is to, you know, uh, to bring it practically in practice. In practice, ke liye hamari the future generation of the dentists who are getting prepared. Uh, at dental schools, both public and private, you know, they need to, uh, we need to target them. And along with that, uh, I think uh, the major challenge would be that, uh, you know, cross infection control measures are implemented through letter and spirit in the current practices which are out there, because these lot of our dental students who graduate from dental schools go out they start their career in the practices as an associate and the habits and the practices they build up there they continue to uh, you know uh, carry on with that and which is a dilemma for us all now the context with regards to how to implement uh, standard precaution i will use the term uh, standard precaution because that is the use uh, that is used by cdc and generally we have been teaching in those terminologies so the standard precautions, the implementation you have, oh, I think uh, very important that uh, we start the theoretical context and its practices from the preclinical years. These practices should be implemented 
from the phantom head practices in the second year and even those schools which who are doing you know first year phantom heads even at that stage and later on they should be transformed into the clinical years now what are the problems in the clinical years clinical years may a uh, problem is uh, you know there's a huge rush in the opds in the dental clinics or or departments uh, there is a shortage of staff shortage of funds so all these need to be streamlined and uh, i think to start with the first and foremost would be the staff training if you want to implement that and the staff training includes all the dentists but above all it will be the dental chair side assistants who who are there as a, as you you can say frontline warriors is the term which we've been using for covid-19 so these are the front the first line of uh, our front front frontline warriors and then comes you know the practices we establish within our departments so essentially it is a culture which needs to be developed the culture needs to be clearly defined the standard operating procedures need to be uh, clearly identified and following that the staff training has to be carried out once staff training has been done we have to go proceed on by placing all these systems in place once those systems are in place we have to ensure that a, a proper evaluation process and a, an accountability system is in uh, you know is implemented because without that uh, it would never come uh, you know we cannot implement and we cannot impart these you can say instincts to our younger generation now what are the problems with the, the put, putting the systems in place the problem comes in in terms of the hr in the in terms of the materials and in terms of the culture and th that is the real big challenge which we will have to you know proceed with the you know it's a huge challenge now moving forward with the covid advent of covid it has uh, you know it's a challenge us all in our private practices all the dental schools the practices are still closed and we are all planning to start that again actually this challenge has become an opportunity for us all because you know previously had we gone into this uh, mode of uh, trying to implement these standard precautions probably people would not have taken it that seriously now that our own lives are at stake we are we have to take it seriously and we have to move forward in these terms and uh, in this context i mean uh, the covid challenge itself i mean uh, in large departments with multiple dental units uh, you know pose a special challenge for us for that i think uh, going into uh, in this forum it would uh, probably take a lot more than what uh, we can implement but in brief the crowding has to be avoided we have to you know uh, uh, maybe shift system has to be put in place and air exchange systems have to be you know engineering in the engineering context uh, established within every of every uh, you know the clinical operatories or the halls another dilemma which uh, i think uh, we all face uh, the curriculum we are following the training we are imparting i graduated like in 1986 unfortunately the same curriculum is still in place times have moved forward uh, i mean the kind of uh, we we have, we have compartmentalized dentistry into four or five major specialties and once we go into one clinic we you know uh, stop thinking of the other clinic so the holistic approach is not there and uh, again in the context that the training program as they have been designed it is more to do with quantity quantity of work and not the uh, with regard to the quality of work and as we go into quantity of work the the standards of cross infection would automatically go down i think the very important fact uh, in this forum with all our worthy colleagues uh, who are heading various institutions 
uh, we really need to redefine these standards. We need to redefine the standards of the quality of the, uh, you know, the practices they have to do with regard to the clinical uh, uh, procedures rather than 150 or 200 fillings. You know, if you do good number, but good quality, decent number, but good quality, you would be able to achieve. And that this automatically challenges us with regards to the uh, cross-infection control as well. So I think that is one area. Academically, I think theoretical perspective, the current generation is very uh, sharp. They catch up very quickly with the theoretical bits. They are exam smarts and they know that in exams they have to be up to date with the current practices. And they generally, uh, most of the students would catch up with that. However, it is the practical aspects which we as role model do not uh, you know, provide them with the practices and accordingly they do not follow the, the SOPs. So very important that in each institution, we document policies for cross-infection control. Once they have doc been documented, it ha they have to be implemented with a proper evaluation system and accountability system. And for this purpose, there should be infection control task force in every institution. And that task force should be heading this task and uh, uh, taking it forward. I think with this, I will stop here and give opportunity to our other colleagues to uh, join in. Thank you very much. So thank you so much. Uh, I think you got it right. Opportunity, it really is an opportunity because a lot of people were reluctant to go to dentists to get the dental treatments done even before COVID. And if we can really uh, fix our issues in house, I think that really creates opportunities for us to grow. I think uh, unless we bring auxiliaries on board, I mean, really we cannot achieve uh, pro uh, pro proper protocols because I mean, there's issues at different levels. It's just not dentists. I mean, we're gonna have to bring everyone on board and think with cross infection protocols is either we have it or we don't, there is nothing in between. So either we are absolutely secure or we are not. We cannot go with half my years. And I think that really is uh, something we need to look. And I think uh, quality is the way to go forward. Less is more, less is more. That's really what it is. Dr. Anwar Shah, please. Nemra. Sir, uh, please up now unmute. Uh, yes, Assalamu alaikum. Thank oh, you very sorry. much for inviting me, Dr. Akeb. I'm very grateful. Um, my respectable colleagues are all here who are heading some of the dental schools. I think Dr. Abed touched on very, very important point. Our dental school, Shifa Dental College, just started last year in December. And few of my faculty members are here. But I think the last 10 months, 90% of our work went into developing written policies for cross-infection. And unfortunately, Dr. Sadia was possibly <laughs> locked out. I think she is the leading the quality, clinical quality assurance cell which consists of like five to six people. And the task I gave them was to develop written policies for cross-infection. And I told them that we don't believe in plagiarism or theoretical things. We want something practical and solid. I personally, out of conviction, I agree it is very important Cross-infection is the most important aspect in dentistry, which unfortunately has been neglected, especially in our country. And also because our Shifa International Hospital is a JCI accredited hospital. It is also a requirement of JCI that we follow the international protocols. Now, I would briefly go through what we do 
in Shifa uh, College of Dentistry. First of all, we try to make written protocols. They can, as Dr. Abid said, that there is no point making policies. They are not only for decoration only. Then you need to educate and train the people. And again, when you train and educate the people, is somehow cultural in our country that you have to implement it and also monitor it. But the most important thing, the take home message I took from Dr. Abed's uh, speech was that we have to become a role model. And I keep telling my faculty that unless you practice what you teach them, there is no point. I'll give you my example. I graduated in 1994 from Heber. In my days, I remember that I would do 2025 extraction with single needle. Now you can blame me like in my peers were also somehow doing more or less the same. So unless they do something differently, I would follow them. Allah mujhe maaf kar de. They can, I have done hundreds and hundreds of patients with the same needle. Now what we have done here in Shifa, that we, that we made that we written policies. First of all, all students and all staff who are coming to Shifa College of Dentistry, they would be screened. There is a bit of echo from my side or from somewhere else. Can you hear me? Okay. So for all students, we do screening during the admission and it is part of our policy. It is in our uh, prospectus that if anybody has HIV or hepatitis B, chronic carrier, they will be excluded from the board. And then as a second step, all the faculty, staff, and students who are coming in contact with the patient, they would need hepatitis B vaccination. And then, of course, the other booster dose. Hand hygiene policy is not only for vaccination. We have made written hand hygiene policy PPE policy. Some of my faculty told me that, sir, in some dental colleges, I think we have to take that responsibility as well. Some of them told me, sir, in the previous college where we were, we would be given a box of gloves and then at the end of the day, they would count the number of gloves and the patient. I told them that if I don't see a heap of gloves at the end of the day, it means that you haven't done any good job. I don't care how many gloves did you use. Once you pass an instrument to the clinician and he asks you in the middle of the procedure, you have to take the gloves off. It's very difficult, but we have 120 CCST cameras in the hospital. We have made a monitoring system. I'm sorry to say, but I'm very kind of dictator in that sense, because it is very, very important. I keep telling them and my faculty, some of them are here, that if I cannot tell, if I cannot send my own daughter without phoning somebody that my daughter is coming, please look after her. That means that I have failed the vision of Shifa College of Dentistry. My daughter would come here exactly the same as somebody else child or another patient is coming to this hospital. If I go further, then of course, this is almost now 600 pages uh, written protocol. And it's not copied and pasted. Of course, we have taken ideas. We haven't made it. It's all international, but we have given that personal touch. Needle stick injuries, environmental infection control to clean the uh, surfaces between the patients. CSSD, we made a CC CSSD into three parts, dirty part, clean, and uh, sterile. The dirty part is completely isolated from the other two parts, and we have put an exhaust and have created negative pressure so that it can only suck things from the... 
This is just give you some examples. Then transportation of people. For transportation, we have buses, especially trolley, two compartments, one below, one above. And again, we have purchased two containers, closed containers from total technology people. One is red, one is blue. The guidelines are that when you take instrument from the clinic, that would go in the blue and you would keep that on the lower compartment. And we have fortunately two lifts in our hospital. One lift is designated for uh, instruments only. And then they would take the instrument to the C C CSSD. And when they come back and bring the uh, clean instrument, that would come in the red close box but that red closed box would be on the top of the trolley. The dirty would go on the lower and the clean would go on the top. And this is a protocol and being observed in letter and spirit in Shifa College of Dentistry. We have meant two doors to the uh, CSSD. One is for dirty, one is uh, coming out only from the clean one. If I go into further details of that, then uh, packing, if we do packing in, uh, in a tray, in a cartridge, then only one single pouch. If we pack only like probe, tweezer, mirror on, in the pouch, then our protocol is that we would pack it in two pouches across the board, regardless where there is COVID or there is no COVID, that is our protocol. The reason being that probe is there that can puncture the single pouch. I'm just giving you some highlights of what we do at Shifa. Um, Bovid, some of you would be aware of that, that we do BDS and BMS. The Bovid dick test and uh, batch mandatory, uh, monitoring test. There was a bit of uh, dispute among us uh, that whether we should do both or not. But in the morning, they would check the autoclave, that it is working and proper vacuum is being formed. Then with each batch, they would do the BMS test. It's expensive, but so far we're doing it. We don't have the facility for biological testing in Shifa College of Dentistry, but fortunately we have that at Shifa International Hospital. So every week, then we do a third test for biological test. And we take the, the, the strips to Shifa International Hospital. I think another important thing we are missing in uh, Pakistan, unfortunately, is the dental uh, unit water line. To my knowledge, there would be very few dentists and uh, dental colleges who would check the water lines of their dental units. We have made a protocol in Shifa International Hospital every month. The international protocol is that this, the, the microorganism has to be below 500 CFU. But in Shifa, our protocol is that it must be 100 CFU. And you would, you would be surprised that about seven or eight months ago in Shifa, we got about 1,000 CFU. And we just uh, gave the doses of uh, sodium hypochlorite again and again and brought it back to below 100. In Shifa College of Dentistry, we have the same protocol. Because we have so many dental units is not possible so we would do random check from each department and if it is above 100 cfu then we would obviously uh, uh, give them shock with the appropriate dose of sodium hypochlorite should i conclude i have a few more points dr uh, saab can i go on more sir time? please please uh, i mean we have time so we would okay. like to Sorry, it went, thank uh, you I'm very strict with time myself, but sometimes uh, I'm sorry about that. So I wouldn't take uh, more than a few minutes. Right. So what else we have done for the water? For the whole building, we purchase a chemical dosimeter, which costs about one lakh fifty sixty thousand. When the water enters the building, it is being fluoride, uh, chlorinated. The whole building water. Not only that, when the water comes back to the clinical area, we have clinics on three areas. In each floor, then we fitted three jumbo filters. 
So all the water which comes in the dental unit, cup, the spittoon, and in the uh, sinks is being fluoridated. This, this is second line of uh, defense, you can say. Third one, all the dental chair in the evening, the bottles would be removed. They would be put upside down, dry. I'm not going into the further nitty gritty, but just the big things. And in the morning, distal water would be put in the bottle so that in the triple syringe and uh, hand pieces, only distal water goes in. All our 75 chairs are fitted. The pipelines are gone. I have done that. It's ready for uh, RO plant. But at the moment, we don't have RO plant. But it's a matter of time that we would, uh, inshallah, install a reverse osmosis plant in the whole building. Um, Legionella, because I spent a lot of time in the UK and these things are very stringent there from Department of Health. It was another requirement, but I just uh, inquired and in Shifa International Hospital, Legionella test was not available at that time, uh, but they are working on it. Then we would do Legionella test as well, because that is the most important in uh, water lines. Now, coming back to the education and training, we haven't yet put this on the website. Some of our faculty, obviously, they spent eight, nine months working on it. I put all the documents in, turn it in, because I don't want plagiarism. Of course, there would be some there, because some of the terminology, cross-infection, it would show. I don't want 90% that you copy and paste. So they were of the opinion that we shouldn't put it on the website, because other people would copy it before we can even show it that it, it belongs to us. And I said, that is exactly what I want, for people to copy it. It's not the piece of paper that, you know, you can uh, have the folder from the uh, American or British uh, uh, cross-infection uh, commissions, whatever they are. It's the implementation. I want people, I want people to follow the cross-infection policies. Unfortunately, I know some of my friends who got infected because of dentists. And my vice chancellor keep telling me that you fulfill the vision only when people would start going to Shifa College of Dentistry or other than coming to Shifa International Hospital. And they would say that the standards at Shifa College of Dentistry are much higher than Shifa International Hospital. So we would put this inshallah on the website. Obviously we have the hard copy. We do orientation for the staff and students. We have four weeks, my faculty is here, four weeks orientation for the students in, in a group of 10. And 70% of that orientation time is being spent on the uh, cross infection. And I keep telling them that I was given a lecture about cross infection and that's it. My friend, I'll give you, sorry, uh, uh, keep, keep giving me an example. He say, Pakistan mein itne masle hai, lekin koi bhi masjid mein the reason is that from the very beginning if you go with shoes in the mosque you would go to Jahannam. So I apply exactly the same policy that we have to tell them, we have to brainwash them from the very beginning. And I have put the cross infection module, we have integrated curriculum from the beginning and at the end of each module cross infection is there. We haven't just don't want to do formality. Is there? We would check with every competency, tooth extraction or uh, scaling. We would check the cross infection uh, protocols as well. Um, we also run workshops for the staff and faculty. We have done, but I think I suspect that we have to do every three months. We have hand washing facilities in each department. Another thing is that if we are talking and making policies, unfortunately, forgive me, I'm not personal about any of my respectable colleagues, but some of the dental colleges I have been in Islamabad, there is no sink for washing your hands in the clinical area. Leave alone these policies if there is no sink in the clinical area. I met clinic in all clinical areas sinks. There is a uh, soap dispenser, there is soap, there is uh, uh, sharp containers, two or three, four in each department. In all departments, there are hand sanitizers. 
in the corridors there are hand sanitizer and they are not empty and some of people, some of my colleagues might say oh is very expensive she is very uh, rich unfortunately we are university we are not rich we we borrowed the money but we wanted that standard we have displayed all the hygiene uh, posters in various areas sharp injury posters and protocols displayed uh, sharp containers are everywhere the important thing is the monitoring now that would test uh, whether uh, we would be successful or not um, but inshallah for each protocol the, in the document at the end of the document we have three or four monitoring forms that we would monitor it if we don't monitor it this is just waste of time we have to develop the, the culture of uh, cross infection prevention and i would conclude it by this that if we don't practice something ourselves we should not expect our students to practice something thank you very much thank you sir it was really wonderful to hear all those thoughts and uh, and it's really encouraging to see like you know all these things are being implemented uh, i think gold standard is really like you know we we need to have that commitment that you know if i cannot take my own kids to my practice i don't think i should be working at all so i really think that is the way to go and that is what we should aim for uh, one thing which was encouraging to find out that there is some support as in place i've been talking about for luck i'm trying to find a place where we can send uh, our uh, article staff for support testing in america when i was practicing it was a must i mean we had to do it every monday it was a must thing and i don't know if our article is working properly or not without support testing we cannot find out so i think we need to work on that dr akif please I hope you, uh, you can hear me. Uh, I'm I'm really honored to be the part of this uh, panel discussion, and uh, my best wishes to all of the colleagues. And I believe uh, most of us are, are belonging to the private uh, dental colleges. So, in fact, uh, the people your team was uh, regarding the setup. of the an implementation of the universal protocol or a standard protocol in a government sector uh, please uh, can anybody mute the mic please uh, somebody has the, uh, the please, uh, please thank you so much uh, so uh, I, i would start this thing uh, it seems uh, that nelson mandela said once it seems impossible until it's done so uh, you see uh, my respected colleague professor abid and dr anwar uh, said very rightly and talk about the implementation of the cross infection control uh, yes uh, cross infection control is our topic and the corona has uh, revolutionized the world and uh, two things is very important when the corona emerge one thing is uh, we stopped doing dentistry we will all choked uh, throughout the world so that means we were aware so the such kind of patient are very uh, dangerous and we are all well aware and that can transmit the disease and sick killing disease but second thing comes in the mind is so we we as a world including the developed and the developing country they were not prepared to deal such kind of any emergency and the virus is transmission so uh, if you look at the uk and america australia and everywhere uh, it was all choked uh, the reason being uh, in fact is a very uh, a very uh, stage emerging strain nobody knows the background of uh, this virus and its uh, transmission though the endocrinal studies and now the authenticated studies are going on uh, very rightly said uh, by, by professor abid you see when we talk about the institutions so institutions are meant for the teaching and training of the students and and for the community services when we talk about the students teaching and training and obviously if we look at the evolution of the cross infection control and infection control in the institutions we all worked in a government setup and from the last 30 years 
and we all were blamed to be done uh, dentistry without gloves. So there was the one container in one institution and we dip the instruments and you do the dentistry. But now the things have changed really from the last 20 years of the private dental institute experience, I would say uh, we have reached up to the, at, if I would not say the, the standard, but at least close to the standard, uh, uh, the alpha the resources and the training and the implementation is concerned. Uh, I believe every institute has the cross uh, the, uh, the sterilization room, either it's a central or individualized. Every uh, institute is well equipped with the autoclave, and now everybody knows the what is the type B autoclave and how the dirty and clean area and storage area is being there. The only thing what I feel in the Corona time, what I feel is the environmental control. In the private setup, there is no issues of the PPE, no issue of the sterilization, equipment, material. Uh, there's a certain administration, they can supply a little or they can supply more. Uh, yes, environmental control, we don't have an isolation rooms to work with the aerosol generating procedures. So uh, what I would suggest in uh, institutions, and the time has come because these recommendations were already there. You see, now we have reached to two things, what we have and what we need to have. And we, what we have, we need to implement it. So we have all the SOPs, we have all the documentations, every institute are there, they are well wise, they have made the documents and everything that there, but needs to be trained uh, students. Uh, even our patients are well educated now. Even a private practices, the patients used to come and ask what you have done for the corona, uh, especially what you have introduced new things. So the people have to do the new things. This is for the community services and your practices as well. You have to elevate your practices by doing the environmental control, but you have to be very rationalized. Don't be idealistic for every patient because uh, this was not in the developed world. That's why we stopped doing dentistry. So we have to think rationally as a whole, being ahead of the institutes, what could be done rationally for the environmental control. So we have 124 dental units. We have a six big hall and the 30, 30 units, with, even with the partitions. So it seems to be uh, difficult to control the environment but we can have a separate, separate, we can allocate separate aerosol generating procedures. And if we can find ourselves in a, 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 the LMDC, you see, as uh, Professor Anwar said, uh, the documentation is there, SOPs are there. Uh, so we have started with the, uh, as you see, from the last three and a half months, we, the, the, our dental hospital is closed. So that means, we don't have an ideal environmental control. Although we have all the things, we can, we can have a hazmat kit, we can have all the type of mask, we can have all the type of PPEs, but, but if because of the, uh, the, uh, the, the Hispanic situation and, and the environmental control, we stopped with industry. Now the SOPs is we are going to start in the next month. We are going to start, our outdoor was about 300 patients. Now we are going to start from the 25 patients. So from the 25 patient, we are going to have a triage center. We have a triage desk. Then we have a spot, the patient, they, how they will stand, where they will stand to collect the receipt from the reception. We have nominated the reception area uh, with a three feet apart. When you have to leave one seat and uh, alternatively you will set it. So you see six feet is recommended by all the, but look at the space available. So we can't leave the two seats. So we start with, so practically everybody has to, patient who used to come has to be at the mask. So the six feet apart is ideal, but for in our institution, it seems to be a difficult one. So uh, we alternately seating are used. So same situation, 124 unit, we start with the 25 patients. So even with the outdoor filtration of the 20 patient, four patient goes to the each department. We have 30 at least unit in each department. So we can leave two unit empty. 
so in this way we are going to start and uh, reopening our college so with the, with all these precautions there uh, yes uh, we are going to install the uv lights but obviously working uv lights are important but the uv light which we are going to install the which you don't work so we have to take the breaks or you can you uh, switch on the lights uh, at the beginning of the day or the at end of the day so working uv lights you can install and the air purifiers uh, we can install the so the things which can be manageable which can do yes the hvac system and all the uh, the systems of the hipa filter that can be done but i believe it's very early to say all the institute should have it uh, as far as the very nitty gritty uh, the water pipeline the ro implants uh, the ro plants are there in lmdc we have a three ro plant and all the water supply is fine but obviously the monitoring which i get it some monitoring of cfu that is very important so uh, what i said is uh, so the the resources we have we should utilize maximally number one then we need to redesign the things more third thing which is very important uh, that is we should invite the external agency to check your all the system like uh, in the last 3 and 4 month we have a visit of iso so we are iso certified iso will not uh, is is the such a uh, you see uh, the big thing but just uh, what we were doing that we just documented so iso needs the documentation so for example the waste were already being disposed we have a three basket white yellow and high risk uh, red but what was there that their log book are not there the what the weight of the waste collected from the each department and carried to the separate department and going for incineration all the system were there but the documentation so the, as the sterilization the there the register and the computerized record of the sterilization the cycle start cycle ends how much the weight of the instrument number of pouches and all these things so you should invite the external agencies either iso or the phc a health care commission you can invite it they can check your uh, the cross infection they will certify you at the same time i, I would say uh, you would start the certification of the student and as well whenever uh, the you uh, uh, the third year student comes you have to do the two things number one you have to take the health record health record of all the service, uh, the staff so we have a policy uh, as the pmdc guideline from the 2019 so that we have to keep the health record whenever you induct us any staff either para dental or a senior faculty member keep the health record of that staff member or when the student join it you should have a health record and in the practical training start so you have a fresh record so you should maintain the file of that a student so he or she will be eligible so you see in in our institute we have a qualifying test we don't allow any student to work in the department in a hospital until he passed the qualifying test and qualifying test has the two part one is the written part and other is the viva part so what we do is so the cross infection certification if we make a must for the training either by the external agencies or by our trained persons by doing the workshop so even two workshop for example and take a test of this so if surgery department if the student is coming he should know the procedure sops of that exodontia with full cross sterile environment the problem uh, lacking in in our two department mainly the operative and the the uh, the prosto uh, you see the people they know everything but you see it's very difficult to make a policy to how to disinfect the impression uh, impression and the model surgery and ortho has a very limited issues uh, operative has a aerosol proceeding so what i would say is sops for each procedure with reference to the cross infection control like in operative rubber dam should be must so you have to be trained for that so with certain such, uh, little changes we can implement it which are doable at uh, the second thing is uh, Dr. Uh, professor abid mentioned about the curriculum the curriculum you see uh, we are talking about curriculum 
uh, since uh, 2000. Professor Abed is a medical edu educationist. I have done the master in uh, medical education. And curriculum, by definition, everybody knows it's a dynamic do document. It's a chariot race. It's not a document which will, a static document. So it has to be evolved. And we have to add the new things. You see, the, if, uh, if, you see, in the course, the corona and COVID will not be there. But in the exam, the COVID question would be the most favorite question. So in the YY even, the most of the, the, the in, in, so what would say, uh, I would say the current problem and situation in the society would be the part of the curriculum. And it should be, if you don't like to read the uh, book, which is five year old or a two year old, if it's if it not edited, so how come you can teach the student with a curriculum from the last 20 years? So the things has changed, the world has changed, the different agencies should come in. And the second important thing, if you look at the world, uh, in the 12 world, the people are doing their, their clinical requirement of students, they are doing the qualified. And they are, they, are, they are more stress on the quality, not the quantity, as very rightly said my respected colleague. So if we rush against the 200 extractions, 100 fillings, 100 uh, uh, ultrasonic scaling, and all these requirements will give you the final year student. So we would will not maintain the cross infection control. What we can do it, we have to calculate the time. If he or she is working for 10 to 1.30 or 2 o'clock, so four hour. So what would be the procedure is, is a 30, 35 minutes or one hour procedure. So you, the only one student can do in a day, two patients. So if the two patients, if we don't follow the comprehensive treatment plan as the different development countries, even we are following the PMDC requirement, I don't mind it, but we should reduce the number of the requirement. So we should follow the, the, the maximum, uh, the cross infection control and other universal protocol measures. So I, I would say, uh, uh, the the, I, uh, the my conclusion is I will not take the holistically I will talk it. Uh, one thing you this is a good thing. Okay, we have all made the SOPs. We should share the SOPs each other. All the institution had, and come to the common, uh, the doable, rational ways, practical things which can we we can make a part of the curriculum, or which we can implement in our institution. And I'm very thankful to the Dr. Madassa to providing that platform. And we can continue. This is not a thing, the one day job. So we can continue this discussion. So we can come up with the conclusion. And the admin of every college is a, have a different uh, sort of behavior. You see, I'm working from the uh, LMDC from last 20 years. There was a time the instrument wrapped was in a gray paper. Now, nobody bothered to ask how much pouches are being used. So I, I in a single extraction for 50 rupees, we opened 50 pouches. So the gauze is separately packed. So it says something misused. Dr. Anwar said very beautifully, so I would like to see the, the bundle of the gloves. But at the same time, I would say, no doubt you will treat and train. But you have to teach and train the student how to use the things judiciously. This is not the thing, I, if I don't the glove and I need to ch touch the draw, we have to stop this. So we have to teach, once you wear and don't the glove, now you have to be very careful. So it is not the thing, so one gloves pair, we wanted to do the one procedure, but at the same time, we would like to give the sense. Yes, so because this is not a thing, if they become, I remember the person who were teaching uh, the, the prosthetic in my student life, he used the impression material in the bowel at the end of the impression when we mix it and we put the tray in the mouth, there was not a single drop of alginate in the in the bowel. So that does not mean we, we, we are very frugal and uh, we want to save money. Uh, yes, we are providing everything to students, but students at the same time should realize this, say so the admin at the end, what will, they will exhaust it. So we have to rationalize realistic for all the implementation of the set center protocol. So thank you so much. 
Thank you, Dr. Akhtar. Uh, I think it was really uh, to the point, and uh, I really believe that, you know, I mean, we don't need to introduce the new wheel. Uh, I was talking to Eve Kani when I was uh, inviting her for the conference, and she said that, you know, we really need to make sure that, you know, there is no room, uh, there's nothing uh, left in universal protocols that is the key to moving forward. We don't need a lot of fancy uh, vacuums and whatnot. Because at end of the day, we can have all the gears and everything in place. But if our assistant, while he's cleaning the room, is going to use that dirty glove and uh, place a tray uh, with a, cl a clean instruments, I think everything is in the tray. So uh, key would be to getting them on board. Key would be to train them. I think it's going to take culture uh, uh, well. And uh, one thing uh, you rightly pointed out, there has to be health. Uh, rackets for everyone. I mean, we supposed to actually have uh, uh, vaccinations done even for assistance for hepatitis. Hepatitis is a much bigger problem in Pakistan than COVID. I mean, it is. It's the reality. And I mean, no one should be in clinical area. Dentists and assistants should be without hepatitis vaccine. So, Dr. Ashad Malik, please. Bismillah rahman rahim. First. Uh, Happy evening to everyone. Very happy. You have come to this platform, and especially I am thankful to all the learner people sitting in front of me. Professor Abid has done some things that are very practical. Shaji has done so well. बहुत ही वंडरफुल तरीके से एक्सप्लेन किया एंड इट वाज रियली अमेजिंग आई माय मेनी कुलीट्स आल्सो इनफॉर्म मी अबाउट द शिफा स्टैंडर्ड एंड आई नो दैट इशा जी इज देयर एंड माशाल्लाह इन हिज प्रेजेंस इट विल ग्रूम मोर एंड इट्स स्टैंडर्ड विल इंशाल्लाह रेज मोर विद रेफरेंस टू प्रोफेसर आकिब इंस्टीट्यूट it was the ideal one once, and yet I can say it is with reference to sterilization and equipment. I would uh, uh, well know that uh, uh, Samir Kazi was uh, there, and uh, he has started this sterilization system in very early stages, say five, six years back, than when he established a separate uh, system in uh, uh, LMDC. Now, with reference to private colleges, I think that it is policy to policy of every institute as well. And sometimes you, in the private institution, it is not only the principal or it is not only the administrator. You are under certain chairmen and under certain umbrellas. And you have to abide by all the uh, strategies and all the rules of what they are going to have and this is reality that sometimes many principal having very good energy and they want to bring their institute up to a very good standard but they cannot due to limitation of finances due to limitation of their what you say administrative powers See, these are realities in private colleges. Whether it is Shafa, whether it is LMDC, whether it is uh, any institute, you have to run with all these things. But one thing is that we cannot compromise on the humanity safety. That is whether they are our students, whether they are our patient, parents, and whether they are our staff. We have to be very cute enough that uh, we have to save their lives. And I'm Shah's uh, recommendation and whatever they are doing, it is remarkable. Akib's uh, Institute, I know very well. And I well know Dr. Abed Asher's uh, uh, Institute as well, that they are doing remarkable. They are uh, very good and ideal institutes of our country. And I am uh, really proud of all these institutes. But the one thing which I want to talk, that is not of the private institutes. 
I will like to talk of the government extremes, which is really alarming for us. Shaji, आप शफा में जो मर्जी कर लें आपको इतने पैसे आ जाएंगे आप सोने का भी फेस मास्क लगाना चाहे लगा लेंगे वट अबाउट डी मॉन्वर्सी कॉलेज ऑफ डेंटिस्ट्री वट अबाउट निश्चर कॉलेज ऑफ डेंटिस्ट्री आकेब योर पेरेंट इंस्टीट्यूट वट यू से देर आई बिन फोर ईयर प्रिंसिपल एट Punjab Medical College. We all are sitting here, and maximum we are from these institutes. And what is going on there? We are talking of so sophisticated and mashallah, Shaji, you have given so wonderful picture that we think that we are sitting in England. Go to De Montmorency College. Enter there. Go to Nishtar Hospital. Enter there. Whether these patients are not our patients, these are not our nationals, these doctors are not our brothers, and what they are suffering from. Private institute to a limited institute है. आप पैसे ज़्यादा मिल गए, आप बहुत अच्छा डेवलप कर जाएंगे. आपको पैसे ना मिले, आपके सेठ ने आपको पैसे ना दिए, आप लिमिटेड हो जाएंगे. Now what about the government institute? We all are here. What we are doing for those people? हम यहाँ पे बैठे हैं, हम अपने institutes की बातें जरूर करें. Good. But we all are here. आखिर ने एक हमें बड़ा अच्छा platform दिया. हमारे पास तीन पंजाब में institute. तीन हमारे पास टोटल हैदराबाद और कराची के बनाने और एक कोयटा में एंड दीज इंस्टीट्यूट आर रियली मिजरेबल कंडीशन आप सर 19 2020 की बात करते हैं वहां पे डेंटिस्ट्री 2020 की नहीं है 19 की हो रही देयर इज नो एसओपीज गोइंग ऑन इन दीज इंस्टीट्यूट आके गो टू डी मॉन्यूमेंट्री कॉल टुमारो and see how many sps are going on there and shaji is talking about the filter water coming from the pipes and is seeing the sedimentation and what about the big big institutes where we are getting the precious uh, uh, person of this nation sabse laik bachche hamare wahan pe jaate hain aur wahan pe hum kya unko de rahe hain hum unko kya sikha rahe hain to meri aap logon se ye Either we go to the president. I call our president. I have with the PDA. Ke, unko bhi humne personal level pe kaha ke we are not so worried about the private institute. Ek PMDC ka letter aata hai. To private institute wale apne recognize karne ke liye ek crore pe shaam tak principal ko de dete hai ke ye le lo aur ye saari chizen la ke subha tak le aao aur subha inspection hai. What about the अब मुझे रिकग्नाइज करवाया मैंने पंजाब मेडिकल कॉलेज फैसलाबाद का डेंटल सेक्शन आके बिज विटनेस टू इट एंड हाउ वी हैव डन इट हाउ वी हैव प्रोवाइडेड द इक्विपमेंट सर आर यू जेंटलमैन आर हेयर एंड यू आर लीडिंग पीपल ऑफ द प्राइवेट प्रैक्टिस इंस्टीट्यूट थिंक ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट इंस्टीट्यूट how we people are going to support them how we are going to ask them that these policies should be made for these private institute either we are going to say to the president either we are going to say to the pda or we are going to say to our principals or government secretaries of these people because really god said look at these institutes they are 
गेटिंग द प्राइम स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ अवर कंट्री सबसे लाइक स्टूडेंट वहां पे जाते हैं क्या हम उनको सिखा रहे हैं क्या हम उनको स्टेरिलिटी बता रहे हैं क्या हम उनको एसओपीस बता रहे हैं आके यू हैव प्रोवाइडेड अ वेरी एक्सीलेंट प्लेटफॉर्म दिस एंड माय रिक्वेस्ट दैट ऑल दी जेंटलमैन एंड लेडी शमीम इज सिटिंग एंड शी इज वेरी ब्रिलियंट लेडी एंड वेरी इफेक्टिव लेडी मैं कहूंगा कि वहां के पी के पी प्लीज किसी तरीके से इन गवर्नमेंट इंस्टीट्यूट की स्टेरिलिटी गवर्नमेंट इंस्टीट्यूट को इंफेक्शन कंट्रोल गवर्नमेंट इंस्टीट्यूट के स्टूडेंट एंड स्टाफ की सेफ्टी के लिए कुछ करें uh my request is that uh, i am really concerned about these government parameters uh, rather than my private institutes i am proud of uh, uh, shaji aapne jo baatein ki aakim ne jo baatein ki abid ne jo baatein ki these are very promising one and uh, i salute to all of you but my request is that i use uh, your sources and give some recommendation that how we can improve the standard of the government institute for this infection control and infection thank you very much happy birthday thank you dr ashish i mean i know how passionate you are towards uh, providing better care to poor people uh, i think uh, we all need to work together to create that environment and culture where we compel others to follow it i think there has to be a healthy competition from the people who are willing some people uh, it's not that important but those who uh, who take this as a priority they need to set standards and there needs to be a healthy competition among the dental colleges to see like you know if we can take this to next level and i think it will have trickle down effects and then other thing we could do is to work together and have a bigger voice working together just so everyone talks about the same thing and i think ultimately we will achieve our goals it is a process but i think we're taking a good initiative towards that thank you ji so uh, dr hasnan please assalam alaikum for uh, providing us this platform to discuss this uh, very critical and very important issue uh especially in these corona days so uh i was listening to all our worthy colleagues and um, uh it is impressive to know uh very good systems and very good sops have, are in place in different institutes i would like to share my experience uh regarding this first of all um i would like uh, to share uh how we are working at our institute and how we can improve upon on uh, this there is no doubt that infection control cross infection control has to be of you know, international standards in our institutes and in our uh, private as well as in our government institutes uh, uh, i totally agree with professor arshad malik that uh, in private institutes we are lucky uh, if we have a good administration and good support uh for this but in government institutes definitely there is a problem but i would like to share my experience i have uh, graduated in 1998 uh, from karachi medical and dental college but i do understand that there there must be a lot of problems in those days but under the leadership of professor yasmin salim she has worked very hard to provide state of the art sterilization and cross infection control in our setup so we were lucky to work uh in a proper way with with all infection control procedures way back in 1997 in when i was in third year 1998 when i was in final year so uh, i was lucky to have that uh, system and have witnessed that system and then we have worked uh, uh now um, at our at our institute altamash institute of dental medicine before corona time we were following uh, all the basic guidelines for infection control uh having all the uh, required i don't want to get into more details we are all familiar with the uh, required parameters and we all try to follow them but uh, uh i would like to share my experience during this covid time uh, very few institutes uh, in pakistan have uh, started working after some time we opened our uh, institute and department um, uh, from mid april from uh, 15th of april uh, this year we were uh, close for like two weeks and then we have to start uh, working 
uh, we have uh, followed certain uh, guidelines and protocol um, to make the departments functional. First of all, uh, we have uh, uh, to reduce the amount of people entering in the department. We have uh, uh, made a shift system in the departments. Uh, initially, we have not started uh, inducting house officers. We just depended on our faculty and we classified procedures as essential and non-essential so that pain relieving procedures uh, should be conducted uh, for, for patients who are uh, because at that particular time, uh, most of the institutes college uh, in Karachi were closed and people were suffering. Uh, private practices were closed. People in, in, in dire need were really uh, moving from here and there. So we had to open up uh, to give support to that uh, segment. But what we have done is that we have um, we have set all the standard protocols uh, recommended during this Corona time that we have have a screening station at which uh, we check the temperature, sanitize, uh, we take the history. And then uh, when the patient goes into the um, diagnosis department, we have uh, distancing there and, uh, and all the doctors over there are, are provided with all uh, required PPEs and uh, N95 masks. And then uh, as they move to the departments, like I would like to share my orthodontic department experience that we have divided residents into two groups so that lot, not a lot many patients are there in the department at any particular time. We have uh, rotations. So all every resident visit, uh, visit alternative days and they, their patients are limited. They, are, they, are, they, are, um, uh, they have their appointments on, on regular intervals so that we don't have a lot of people uh, at one time uh, in the department. Similarly, uh, we have the same kind of protocols uh, implemented in the departments. We are definitely, as per regular practice, uh, uh, hand wash stations, sanitizers uh, are all, all available. So these are all standard prot protocols which we have to follow in order to uh, um, uh, to, uh, to establish safe practice. We have to safeguard interests of our uh, of our uh, doctors, our uh, staff as well as our patients. So, but we cannot say no. Uh, and during this time, we have to um, admit this fact that this is not going away anytime soon. So we have to prepare ourselves uh, to work in this same department, uh, same uh, conditions, but with all safety gears and all, all safety requirements. So Alhamdulillah, we are functional since last four months. And uh, initially, it was very difficult for us to convince our faculty to join back because of that uh, real big big fear but uh, alhamdulillah alhamdulillah people have uh, joined us and uh, we are operations since four months alhamdulillah things uh, have moved very smoothly regarding uh, our students uh, it is a regular policy that whenever students get admitted we have to uh, we, we screen them for hepatitis um, and definitely and, and unfortunately last year uh, uh, there was a case uh, uh, reported of undiagnosed hepatitis in our one of our students but we have we, we, we managed that so uh, when, whenever the students are admitted definitely we we screen them uh, when they enter the clinical area they have to have valid uh, vaccination certificate for that we 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 uh, vaccine we, we provide vaccination for our staff for our uh, dental assistants uh on the behalf of the college administration we don't charge them for that and uh, this should be a regular protocol because uh, corona is, uh, is a new entrant but we were fighting with with hepatitis uh, b uh, hepatitis c uh, tuberculosis hiv so so we have to have uh, very strict infection control measures uh, I'm very impressed with uh, Professor Anwar Shah uh, arrangements at uh, Shifa College of Dentistry. So uh, this was a, a few points uh, which were highlighted were new for me as well. So I will take uh, guidance from uh, Professor Anwar Shah regarding that as well. So there is always room of improvement. There is no no point but, uh, that uh, there, uh, we, we always have to improve upon our practices. I think this is a continuous struggle. And during this uh, special times of Corona and COVID, uh, the, the importance of cross infection control has increased many folds. So now the challenge is that we have to, as a, as, a, as a head of institution, we have to look for the safety of our staff, for our faculty members, for our students, and definitely our, our, our patients. So it's a very uh, challenging task for us. Uh, and it, it brings with, uh, it comes with a lot of responsibility on our shoulders to um, to get the right stuff uh, at the right time.
we cannot stay away from this uh, reality that uh, as a dentist as a as a as a dental professionals we have to work we cannot stay away from this work we have to train our students but on the same time we have to in, ensure that the the standard protocols of safety and uh, security are, are there in place uh, i would like to emphasize on this that that uh, in our curriculum i think we need to add more towards um, uh, cross infection control and i personally think that our students uh, are not exposed um, to um, CS, cssd or, or or all these procedures by themselves so maybe we can uh, introduce a module in which students uh, are made make sure that they uh, they do the sterilization cycle and they do the pouching and they, they know how to operate the autoclave and everything by themselves so they are all equipped uh, with all these basic uh, skills when they enter the uh, clinical practice of their own so i think uh, we have to make sure that cross infection control has to be stressed more in in the undergraduate graduate education we have to make sure that our students when when they graduate they are well versed with, with standard protocols and they and this is in their habit of practic practicing all these basic standards this is not that they have to um, uh, opt on that they have they have to, it, it has to be in their um, habit so that there is no um, option of uh, deviation so uh, but but definitely i agree that um, considering many limitations in our society regarding um, financial aspect uh, we do face a lot of problems and we have to we have to come up with with uh, solutions customized solutions for our uh, practices our institutes so but uh, we we all have to make sure that we don't compromise on safety uh, and cross infection control for our students for our residents for faculty and for students so this was a small uh, 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 feedback from my side uh, and uh, i would uh, this is a great opportunity to to meet uh, worthy professionals worthy uh, leaders from all uh, country and uh, thanks to uh, this uh, institution and uh, dr akib so um, over to you Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, I think uh, uh, we do have a moral and ethical obligation towards serving our patients, and we cannot do them alone in uh, times like this. Even uh, I mean, uh, dental pain could be very uh, debilitating. I think it is time that you know we find a balance between uh, our health post COVID, financial health, and also mental health, because I mean they all go hand in hand, and because one gets compromised, it will affect everything. Sir, Dr. Kasim, uh, please. Dr. Kasim? Yes, thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, I'm thankful to Dr. Akeb and his associates for providing us a platform from where we can talk about um, infection control and uh, what can be done about infection control. Let me be very clear about it, that I come from an institution which is sort of a public-private partnership institute. So in that institution, everything has to be passing through one more or less the same protocols which uh, the government institutes are following. So it is really difficult sometimes to follow them. But at the same time, I think there is always room for improvement. Um, Few things which I'd like to mention, I I heard Dr. Anwar, Dr. Akib, and other colleagues, senior colleagues, talking about uh, infection control and the protocols which are being followed at their institutions. One thing... Someone having infection problems. So, they are a source from which infection can spread. So everyone is considered to be looked into properly. There is no differentiation that this patient has to has to go through this protocol or the other protocol. There is only one single protocol which is followed. So. I, I heard Dr. Anwar, I heard um, 
other people also talking about how they are falling. Pouches are to be used for the instruments. I think, alhamdulillah, it is being used. I, what I personally feel is there is no standardization in our country. Pakistan Medical and Dental Council started that by implementing uh, uh, a program in which they suggested that they will rank the institutions. I think that is something which is required in private sector. That provides a sense of competition between the institutions and gives an opportunity to everyone to fight for the top position. And that pushes us to improve ourselves. I think that very much required. Because at this point in time, I talk about institutions, certain institutions that are providing very good patients by having very nice infection. So I think there is something wrong with your connection. You're breaking up. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we'll ask Dr. Sabir to start. Uh, we will uh, come back to him once he logs back in. So Dr. Sabir, please. Sir, uh, unmute Kaldi Jira. Sir, please unmute Kaldi Jira. Problem and I lost the connection. In fact, okay, I think you're back. Tell it, please. Huh. Uh, okay. Please continue. Please continue. What I wanted to say was. Okay, if we want to have competition between the institutions to improve ourselves, I think that is the only way to improve. Is vakat zyadatar institutions ke antar protocols ko follow kiya ja hai, but I think they are not being enforced. We all know the protocols. We all know how to implement them, but sometimes meri kamzori ki wajah se ya mere colleagues ki kamzori ki wajah se wo nahi hoti. Thirdly, I personally feel Okay, the curriculum, BDS curriculum needs revision. It is the same curriculum which is being taught from years and years and years. No, things are being added to it, but in fact, unka number add kiya ja hai. It is not the quality we are talking about. Dr. Abid ne zikr kiya, Dr. Akib ne zikr kiya. The thing is, how many number of extractions you have done? I think that is not important. More important for me is, I mean, kis kisam ka protocol follow kiya hai? Did you really do the extraction properly? Aapka ba, uske indar, in, instead of giving number, it should be credits for that. Ek extraction karke, aur agar aapne gloves nahi pehne huye properly, ya aapne patient ko properly approach nahi kiya, to I personally feel it's not fun having that extraction done. Dhan nikalta hai, to quack bhi hai. But as a professional, when we are doing extractions, I think there should be a difference. We should consider all these protocols. Our evaluation system, in fact, is that a certain time, ke upar certain task, ko kar sakta hai ya nahi. this is our evaluation system. We are not evaluating the quality what he is doing. So, system may problem, hai, I, I personally feel. Again, BDS itself is a four-year program. Many a times we have talked about ke it should increase to five years. So that uske andar uski changes lai ja sake. Yes, BDS needs to have one extra year now. There are a number of subjects which are not being taught even now. Kyunki humare paas time nahi hai. The number of hours jo uske liye allocate kiye gaye hain different subjects ke liye, I personally feel they are too much in one single year. Aap agar dekhe BDS ka curriculum, to it is, um, you have maximum of uh, 1260 hours. Hum har saal jo ko padha rahe hain, that is around 1200 plus hours. 
so it is just putting a load on someone without going through ki usme se outcome kya hai hum outcome based education nahi de rahe hum sirf usko feed karne wali education de rahe hain yes there is a great difference in public and private institutions somehow i was once um a student in a public institution and i am working in a private institution i had worked in public sector also in pakistan in fact so uh, i know the problems there also and and dr ashish sahab ne jo kaha i think he is very right we are talking about protocols protocols should be in all institutions public sector ke institutions ke halat are totally different from private sector and the problems there are also quite different the cream of the nation goes to those institutions yes he is very right but at the same time the opportunity provided to those children is not as much as which is been provided to the private sector but yes private sector ke aane ke baad in protocols pe farak bhi bahut pada in fact an eye opener has started we at cmh we receive many of the patients and students at the same time who are who, who in the students specially jo ke public sector ke andar bhi unko jagah milti hai and but they leave those institutions and join our institution why because there is certain protocols there are certain methods which are being adopted i think usme jahan tak financial problem hai dr abid ne kaha yes that is also one and the other problem is with the passage of time the buildings the equipment everything has not improved as much so i think it is a multifactorial problem at this point of time it is not single sided ke ji is wajah se ye institution aage nahi ja rahe ya dentistry ko pakistan mein ye problem hai i i personally feel ke dentistry has a great future and especially considering ke infection control ke upar se jo the talk today is i personally feel infection control is all related to how much uh, or the level of the training that we are providing to our graduates at our institutions every faculty member every staff member even till the sweeper are vaccinated for hepatitis a student cannot en- enter the clinic if he is he is uh, he is not vaccinated by hepatitis we keep a check ourselves yearly uski monitoring ki jati hai jinka nahi hota we go for or uh, we force them to go for uh, vaccination in fact so har cheez ko implement karne ki koshish to ki jati hai but at the same time i think jis tarah kisi ne abhi mention kiya hum unko sterilization ka tarika padha to dete hain but we don't send them to cssd ke wo wahan ja ke khud instrument ko wash kare usko disinfect kare usko dry kare usko pouch mein dale and then usko sterilize kare sterilizer mein kitni der rakhna hai then usko dry karna hai how to disperse i think this is jab tak everyone is not trained for this wo apne lower staff ko kaise train karega secondly ji pakistan ke andar kahin bhi is waqt dental nurses nahi hai koi nursing ka program nahi hai dentistry ka taaki wo protocol ko follow kar sake so it is me and you who has to get it done so agar hamari proper training hi nahi hogi to ye kaise ho sakta hai so ye problem isliye reh raha hai i personally feel we need to have dental assistant training program across pakistan which is to be given credibility by some institutions is waqt tak kahi nahi hai so i think that is the need of the r agar hamare assistants trained nahi hai students jo hum naye graduates nikal rahe hain unko sirf uh, sterilization padhai to jati hai practically unke haath se karai nahi jati to then what do we want at the end of the day theory to bahut padhi ja sakti hai they can even read it at home but i think it is the practical aspect which is lacking but again i think the forums like this which we have been provided by dr akib and the group i think it is in these places that we can talk about and it is the forums like this through which we can communicate to the government ki ki what is required i personally feel we need to have five years bds program more emphasis on infection control and sterilization protocols and with addition of certain subjects also jo ke i think they are the need of the r 
thank you very much everyone so thank you so much i think it was really motivating even for me and i do believe there is a lot of future for uh, uh, dentistry because we have really capitalized on all the potential we have in pakistan and i think that is our own doing uh, i really would like uh, us to work on pre clinical training in our dental institutes because we cannot really throw our students uh, to work on patient to do the fillings and extractions without going through the pre clinical training i think that is unfortunate because i mean we cannot really uh, take those people who uh, poor people come into our institutes and uh, be taken as guinea pigs and uh, uh, at end of the day i do believe that you know that outcome uh, which you talked about is the key because i mean if you are just going through the process and you're really not uh, contributing towards improvement because uh, uh, i mean if a dentist uh, who is graduated from the school his work is no more better than a uh, quack if uh, two models are presented in a lab and the quack or uh, perhaps the exact same thing uh, like the dentist i think there is a problem and that really is something we need to look into uh, g I, i think dr sabir uh, lost the connection so we will move to dr shamil please thank you g हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम कैन यू लिसन मी जी मैम आपकी आवाज आ रही है प्लीज अच्छा बिस्मिल्लाह रहमान रहीम थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी फॉर दिस प्रीशियस फॉर्म एंड स्पेशली थैंक्स फॉर डॉक्टर आकिब जस्ट आई विल गिव यू अ ब्रीफ हिस्ट्री बिकॉज़ आई हैव स्पेंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम इन माय government sector and now i have just recently joined as a principal just a month before so i will give you a grass difference because i have work over there in the government sector we have a number of patient flow is over there so i think so it's difficult for the patient, uh, for the government to cope all these uh, sterilization uh, sterilization strategy but at the moment they are following a little bit but when i was over there because majority of time we are without gloves without mask we are working over there and at, by my time that is round about 2012 and 2013 we have bought uh, category b autoglave by that time so up to now we have different but before that we have nothing special like that but uh, here in uh, private sector i'm here alhamdulillah we are following uh, these cross infection protocol from the day one i have seen uh, we are using the pouches category category b uh, class autoclave and uh, we have different protocol i have just give you a brief history of that that is when the student come in uh, uh, in uh, first year he uh, especially the girls we have uh, they are immunized they are properly vaccinated for hepatitis b and after that for the third year and fourth year we have the workshops cross infection workshops a uh, one week and that is the cross infection workshop as well as the waste management so practically we we uh, enforce the student and that you have to how to apply these all these uh, cross infection protocol practically as well as this is the journal but along with that we give the departmental protocol how you behave in different departments and how you uh, entertain the patient and how you entertain the instrument so all these protocols are alhamdulillah over there now with regard with the covid Uh, uh, at this pandemic we have a lockdown round about 3 months after that we have started the emergency treatment in emergency we are strictly following the journal of sops and that is according to the uh, international sops from 1st june we have started the hospital and each and every employee of the 
hospital as well as the student uh, sorry as well as the uh, this uh, patient he will pass through the triage having temperature check up they have the brief history for the specially for the patient then he or she will be referred to the opd department for the, from the opd he or she will be advised for the antibody test and that is the policy of my hospital my college is a mandatory for each and every patient after that if the patient comes uh, with a negative report and he or she wants a procedure if agp uh, aerosol pro uh, generating procedure then he or she has to perform the antibody uh, um, corona test corona test if that came negative then straight away he will go for the procedure but for positive then uh, we have a uh, isolated rooms and proper ppes and all these protocol we have to follow otherwise those who are coming with a positive history straight away we advise them that you have to go back and to concern the uh, the physician or the pulmonologist if you have any problem like that uh, breathlessness and otherwise with because nowadays it's a trend that more a uh, majority of them they are symptomless but we have to follow these protocols so alhamdulillah we we we, we are not having a single case regarding that we are not going to treat it but my uh, observation is that that is the because the poor patient are coming in and they have the mandatory antibody test and after that if it, it comes negative and then they have to go to for the anti gen or you can say the corona test so it's a it's a huge burden for a patient so we have to follow uh, like uh, sops like uh, universal precautionary measures and we we, uh, we will keep the social distancing and in this way we will cope these poor patient otherwise we will uh, be uh, uh, we will be in a uh, we will have a patient uh, number of patient will be we are losing in that capacity so uh, in this regard i will take suggestion from you people what you will saying and we will also advise uh, uh, the government that uh, they will provide as much as the these ppes for the government sector because in the government sector i think so because my husband is working over there and uh, there is not as much as we have in the private practice Uh, the other thing is that uh, we have uh, because uh, the hauja was uh, frozen in this lockdown period so they are now reinstated and they are uh, coming just uh, well, from the last week and we have arranged first we have uploaded the different videos and the sops which we have adopted for our college we have uploaded that and then we have taken that as those who have Uh, do those who have qualified these that then we have allowed these house officer to work over there otherwise they have to uh, reappear in the test in the next week time and they so these are the our few uh, suggestions and uh, the, the working plan which we are going in, in our hospitals uh, in especially in the peshawar dental college and as well as the because this is under the uh, prime foundation we are also following same in the uh, other hospital Uh, affiliated with this prime foundation uh, otherwise uh, because uh, just a minute just a minute uh, because uh, in the curriculum uh, as you mentioned in the curriculum because we have given one week time to third year and final year uh, in the uh, curriculum and that is not uh, the pmdc but from our side we have included in that that you people have to spend this one week regarding the class infection uh, control and the base management and you have to fulfill this criteria and each and every student has to practically implement and practically practically uh, apply that to the patient uh, i think so this is uh, uh, the one of the best way to control the infection thank you
Thank you. I'm sorry. I thought you were done. I'm really sorry that I uh, I interrupted you. Uh, so I really think it's time for the action, and I think uh, we have to take ownership and we have to uh, take the leadership role. And uh, I think that would be our legacy for future generations to make Pakistan better place. And uh, I mean, uh, I think uh, we cannot. Uh, wait for people to do things. We cannot wait for government to kick in. I think we should start working on whatever we can do on our own and uh, however we can contribute. And I think uh, co working collectively, I'm sure, will be heard sooner or later and um, really uh, take it to the next level. I would like to take opportunity to uh, just uh, inform about what uh, we have done through IPAC IPIC is an organization uh, based in Chicago, a nonprofit organization, and they uh, started this uh, four years back and they reached out uh, last year to uh, start a department of dental hygiene. And uh, we have uh, really uh, worked in uh, making videos, uh, getting curriculum for training, uh, establishing level one and level two training. We uh, we had support from uh, uh, Temple University and we have MOU with uh, OSAP, which is an organization which implements uh, cross infection and dental setups in uh, America. They have been really uh, supportive. They have provided a lot of resources to us. So with all that, we have come up with uh, training protocols uh, where we have online training. Uh, I think it's going to be in two weeks, and I'll share the details where I th uh, Dr. Abed's uh, uh, faculty uh, was participating in that a uh, couple of months back. And uh, we are providing that online so that uh, like, you know, it can go across all Pakistan. Uh, they, uh, we have recorded videos how to do procedures, how to take care of a uh, room, how to handle the impressions, how to uh, break the surgery. Like really, I mean, uh, the, the, even if there is the slightest break in the whole process, whatever we have spent in autoclaves and all the gear, I think there is still a risk with that. So we have to really train our auxiliaries. Uh, and so part of that is to uh, bring in the training for auxiliaries, the dental assistants. I think uh, without that, I mean, most of the work for cross infection is by, done by them. And then uh, we are working towards uh, just uh, things which were mentioned about certification or the uh, way we can uh, we can uh, go towards the place where that there are certified dental practices. Uh, the reason that is important is because uh, once people know uh, these things are in place, when they have faith, when they are not afraid of getting hepatitis or COVID from a dental setup, they will be more willing to get dental treatments done and that in turn increases revenue for dental practices. So uh, our ultimate goal is towards that, but I think that is going to take some time. But we have developed, uh, during the days of COVID, we wanted to be productive. We have developed a whole structure how we can assist in training the trainers at least and bring in a culture and also uh, the training uh, for each dental college if they are willing to uh, 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 uh get our, our help for that. And uh, there is really uh, no charge for any of that. It's just a minimum thing. The good thing happened was uh, that, you know, UHS, uh, Dr. Jay Akram has been really supportive and they have uh, authorized uh, the certifications for level one, level two, and even offered diploma for uh, the courses which we are providing. So it's really uh, a free of charge. I mean, uh, only charges for people who want the certificate uh, just to create a value, especially for uh, hospitals and uh, colleges we are here we are uh, really ready to help you out with any ways possible i think working together setting examples is the way to uh, to move forward i would uh, we just have three minutes uh, staff is all gone they have worked really hard i, I cannot thank everyone including the panels and uh, the speakers and uh, we just have a couple of minutes dr adnan's uh closing uh adnan's closing statement is going to go live in three minutes so uh, by then we can just get shut off. So I Akiv, is me a thing I add. Karna chahunga. Akiv, your course is wonderful, and I have uh, talked with the International College of Dentists at US, and uh, this said me that the International College of Dentists is going to recognize your course, and uh, it will be sent to the council. If you give the, the detail of that course, we will. Uh, affiliate an international college of dentists stamp to your uh, course as well and uh, give us a detail of the 
they give the detail of the quality and the all the protocol and it will be sent to the international college of dentist office and the council will approve it and i am very much sure that if the international college of dentist is going to stamp your certificate it will be recognized all over and secondly uh, we uh, actually want the, this attraction not uh, in here in Pakistan, but I also want want that uh, uh, the people from abroad should contact us for this certification as well. Uh, it is a remarkable effort, and uh, we will say that uh, you would, uh, should uh, recommend not only the uh, University of uh, uh, Health Sciences, but also send this uh, all. Uh, after recognition from the ICD, you must send to the government of Pakistan that this certification is going on there and the people from the government sector, if they want to get the training and they want to get it certified, uh, they are welcome to the institute. This is a very promising thing and it is a very good effort and it should be uh, published and it should be potentiated. No doubt, uh, all of us who are the heads of the institutes and deans are sitting here and we have all the background of knowledge, we have the, all the protocols, we have all the documentation. Uh, Shaji was also giving the detail of the documentation they have. Uh, سنین نے باتیں کی کہ ہم اتنے عرصے سے کرتے ہیں تو مجھے ویسے کچھ بال تو میرے کالے ہیں لیکن میں خیال میں میں سب سے سینئر ہوں آئی گریجویٹڈ ان نائنٹین سیونٹی ایٹ تو سیونٹی ایٹ سے لے کے اب تک شاہ جی میرے خیال میں ایکسپیرینس کے لحاظ سے میں پرائیویٹ میں بھی رہا ہوں اور گورنمنٹ میں بھی رہا ہوں تو میں کہتا ہوں کہ ویجن از ناٹ بائی دی ایج Vision is uh, uh, by uh, our mighty God. اور یہ ہو سکتا ہے کہ بیس سال کا بچہ اتنی ویژن رکھتا ہو کہ ساٹھ سال کا بندہ اتنا ویژن شاید نہ رکھتا ہو تو آئی ایم پراؤڈ آف آکب تم نے بڑا اچھا کام کیا بیٹے اور اس کے لیے ہم سارے تمہارے ساتھ ہیں اس میں کوئی ایسی ڈاؤٹ کی بات نہیں ہے اینڈ وی ول ان شاء اللہ گو بسائڈ یو اینڈ یو ہیو ڈن اے ویری گڈ ایفرٹ اینڈ اسپیشلی جو جو ہمارے ٹاپ کا ہمارے انسٹیٹیوٹس ہیں مثلاً حسنین کا ہے شاہ جی کا ہے عاقب کا ہے اس کے بعد میں عابد کی بات کروں گا قاسم کا بھی نو ڈاؤٹ جتنے لوگ یہاں پہ ہیں سب کے انسٹیٹیوٹ ماشاء اللہ ایک آئیڈیل انسٹیٹیوٹ ہے اور یہ پرائیویٹ کے لحاظ سے ماشاء اللہ وی آر پراؤڈ آف آل دیز انسٹیٹیوٹ اور یہ بھی انسٹیٹیوٹ آپ کے ساتھ جو ہے نا پوری جتنی ہیلپ ہوگی ان شاء اللہ وی ول اسٹینڈ بسائڈ یو Thank you so much. This is really what we need. We need support and guidance because I mean, it is a, a, a evolving thing. Also, I would like to add that, you know, we do have like commitment from OSAP that they will be giving their logo as well on the certificates for level three. For level one and level two, they're not willing, but for level three. And that actually is a good thing. So two American organizations giving our, uh, I mean, the credibility, I think that would be huge. I really appreciate, I think we'll be cut off just any moment or maybe we are uh, already not live because uh, Dr. Adnan's closing message was going to go up at 5.30. So I really appreciate